Dear colleagues, uh, dear colleagues from Europe, uh, good night, America. Good night, Nadim. Thank you so much for participation. For us, it's very important. For us, it's important that despite all these specificities and difficulties in case of epidemiology, we do have the opportunity to work out the new ways of communication with each other. Talking about ovarian cancer today, much will be devoted to new approaches to the diagnostics and treatment of this disease. Uh, at the same time, today we are fully aware that the only way to help uh, this category of patients is surgery, the surgery with the following uh, therapeutic treatment. If you talk about surgical treatment of this disease, of course, uh, the goal of the surgery is to perform the operation that will allow to remove all the uh, manifestations of the disease. In this respect, the important aspect is the choice of a patient for the optimal uh, debulking interventions, and it's very important to avoid suboptimal uh, extent of the surgical treatment. Moreover, uh, the important aspect in planning of the surgical treatment is uh, the symptoms of the disease, namely the symptoms of cancerematosis. If we are talking about surgery today, and numerous trials showed how the residual tumor can influence uh, the prognosis and survival of our patients. So-called tumor-related factors in case of extent and location of the disease is one of the important prognostic aspects in treatment of these patients. If we look at uh, the manifestation of the disease uh, in case of ovarian cancer, 76 percent of in 76 percent of patients, uh, the localization is along visceral and parietal uh, mesotherium, involvement of the lymph nodes, visceral signs, uh, involvement of different parts of the colon, the diaphragmal uh, signs of the disease, uh, their uh, small bowels and retroperitoneal localization of the disease that defines uh, the resectability of the disease. Peritoneal cancerematosis is one of the most significant prognostic factors in case of the choice of the surgical treatment and uh, uh, possibility of uh, the bulking surgery. If we look at the data that are published now, Approximately 25% of uh, female patients, uh, these are the patients uh, in case of which it's impossible to do debulking, and it's uh, due to the localization of the visceral uh, signs of the disease. Today, we have uh, different methods of non-invasive diagnostics of uh, the ovarian cancer, including CT, MRI, PET CT, US ultrasound examination, and one of the new approaches to assess the resectability of the ovarian cancer is the use of the minimally invasive approach, diagnostic laparoscopy. If we look at uh, the published data, today CT computer tomographer is a standard in examination and detection of the predictors uh, of possibility for surgical treatment in case of ovarian cancer. It's been shown that uh, the computer tomography in some cases can be a predictor uh, of an 
optimal debunking intervention and it correlates with intraoperative results of the abdomen revision. At the same time, despite the high specificity of this method, in some cases this method has is less sensitive, especially while detecting changes in case of the spleen, mesenterial signs, diaphragmal involvement, and less specific uh, while assessing the condition of the lymph nodes. Uh, the important aspect is uh, the detection of the peritoneal cancerematosis, especially visceral cancerematosis. Please notice, in case of cancerematosis uh, less than 5 millimeters, uh, the sensitivity of this method is quite low, approximately 11 percent. Uh, this, uh, at some extent, in some cases, uh, make the operation non-standard. Moreover, such localization is uh, the, the visceral signs uh, of the small bowels. Uh, they have the low sensitivity for this method. Today, there are different algorithms to assess the resectability of patients, multifactorial assays uh, that may allow to perform a primary debulking intervention. We should point out that today in the literature um, the use of the uh, infusion and weighted methods of the MRI uh, have been discussed while examining patients suffering from the ovarian cancer. Uh, it provides uh, the better diagnostic uh, opportunities for this patient. Today, uh, uh, the uh, experiments uh, have been conducted. If we assess the peritoneal signs, Different approaches have been suggested. One of the approaches to assess the peritoneal cancerematosis suggests uh, uh, the three groups, uh, the group of low tumor distribution, intermediate tumor distribution, and high tumor distribution. Starting with 1995, one of the integral indicators used today in many of the clinics um, is uh, the so-called uh, index of peritoneal carcinomatosis, uh, which was suggested by uh, Paul Sugarbecker. And in some of the clinical recommendations, uh, uh, this particular method uh, is the basic method for the assessment of the manifestations of the particular uh, disease. And uh, it's important to get uh, proper information on localization and the size uh, the, um, uh, of the manifested disease. Uh, it's important to assess uh, the involvement of different uh, parts of the abdominal cavity in the process. And of course, it's very important uh, to uh, record all the um, uh, uh, focal uh, points which uh, cannot be uh, resected which cannot be debulked. And today, if we speak about the new uh, possibilities in the assessment of predictors of uh, the possibility to carry out the resection, lap laparoscopy is extensively used. Today, there are two randomized trials um, that demonstrate the efficiency of low invasive uh, um, access um, uh, in the process of the assessment of the resectability of the disease. Lap laparoscopy is a method uh, that makes it possible to assess uh, the manifestation, um, uh, the uh, peritoneal manifestation in particular, uh, visceral uh, manifestations of the uh, disease. 
and um, uh, also makes it possible to assess the resectability of uh, the patient. And of course, the most important aspect here is the morphological study, uh, which is so important for the molecular and genetic um, examination and research. In some of the recommendations, uh, so the, we would say uh, in the recommendation of many societies, you will find uh, laparoscopy mentioned, uh, um, used for the uh, uh, purpose of the definition of the type of uh, reductive uh, um, intervention or debulking. And uh, uh, during laparoscopy, uh, uh, with a method that makes it possible to carry out the revision, uh, to assess the resectability, to get the material for the cytological and morphological studies, uh, also makes it possible to carry out the um, molecular and genetic um, examination. It's very important to follow the order of work when you carry out the assessment. The laparoscopic parameters today incorporate uh, the assessment of the basic localizations of the peritoneal cancerematosis, um, of uh, the, the serial parietal um, um, abdominal cavity diaphragm, small and uh, um, uh, great uh, bowels, uh, liver, and if we look at the results uh, which um, uh, today are published, we can see that uh, lapars laparoscopy with great sensitivity makes it possible to um, um, uh, reveal uh, uh, the problems with the bowels uh, in particular, um, with the small bowel, with the greater bowel. And this makes it possible to uh, draw a plan of, for the treatment of these patients. You know that there is a modified system, the assessment for the peritoneal cancer hematosis, the Anafagotti index. Uh, in the basis of which you can find the assessment of eight localizations of uh, uh, perineal cancerematosis and systematized assessment of the manifestations. Uh, cancerematosis um, with less than 10 um, points, according to this scale, make it possible to plan the primary debulking. And a very important aspect here is uh, the following one. This approach makes it possible to um, uh, provide for 30% uh, of patients uh, reduction of the so-called uh, um, uh, interventions, uh, explorative um, interventions. At the same time, there are some negative aspects associated with laparoscopy. Unfortunately, laparoscopic access for some of the patients uh, with disseminated uh, cancer of avaries is um, uh, a threat for them. This is something to be remembered. Moreover, laparoscopic access is not um, um, possible when uh, we assess uh, certain localizations. For example, if we took the uh, also the uh, areas, the uh, post uh, peritoneal uh, area, uh, liver, and so on. So this method uh, must be associated and must be used in. Um, coordination with different uh, radio methods. Now, we should say that currently there is no single uh, um, possible uh, way of uh, assessing the status of the patients. It means that it is necessary to assess the outcomes using combined methods. At the same time, the system of assessment of perineal cancerematosis with laparoscopy makes it possible to improve the results of uh, surgery and uh, uh, improve the achievements uh, that we're aiming at uh, um, in association with debulking.